forgiveness. Forgiveness is the intentional and voluntary process by which a victim undergoes a change in thoughts or feelings regarding an offense, lets go of negative emotions such as vengefulness, and forswears recompense of the offender. I know, starting off a speech with a dictionary definition is revolutionary. But no matter how many unnecessarily large words Merriam-Webster throws in there, a one-sentence description simply cannot encompass the true meaning of the word forgiveness. True forgiveness is letting go of your ego and the anger you feel in order to progress towards a common goal. True forgiveness is not when you say two months later, remember that time that you, when you get in another argument. True forgiveness is putting down your sword after something irreparable happens to you. And this is exactly what my grandparents did after surviving the Holocaust arguably the most evil event of human aggression in recent history. My grandfather, Barry Ikeviks, was born on October 19, 1924, in Munkac, Czechoslovakia, the tenth of Rosa and Eliahu Ikeviks' 11 children. Both his parents were Orthodox Jews, and naturally they expected the same of him. However, this never fully came to fruition. He would often tell me stories of holding on to the tails of one of his family cows to swim across the river and avoid Sunday school. However, growing up Jewish in 1930s Eastern Europe would not grant him these pleasantries for long. And by the age of 17, not much older than I am right now, he was forced to leave his home to escape the oncoming war. Now, during the war, my grandfather was many things. He was a forced laborer. He was an informant to the Russians. He was an assistant under a Hungarian SS officer who had to fear for his life every day in case they found out he was Jewish. My grandfather survived the Holocaust through pure cunning and intuition. After the war, he returned to Munkac to see what remained of his old life and found it destroyed. Both of his parents had been murdered and he was only one of six of his 11 siblings to survive the war. So after a brief stint as a smuggler and a near-death experience with Russian veterans, my grandfather decided to start anew and move to Israel, the promised land, where on the journey, he met my grandmother Rachel Hershkovitz. My grandmother, seen here in the middle of the top row, was born in 1930 in Tech, Hungary, also Jewish, where at the age of 14, she was taken from her home and brought to the most infamous of concentration camps, Auschwitz, where she had to know that her life lay in the hands of Josef Mengele a man so evil, so unhuman, that he had earned the nickname the Angel of Death. Now, after a few months at Auschwitz, my grandmother was taken to Reichenbach, another forced labor camp, where, because of her small hands, she made radios for the German army. By the age of 15, my grandmother had faced more hardship than many of us can even begin to imagine. By the age of 15, the hardest thing I had faced was unit one of pre-calculus here at SAS. <laughs> now, both of them had faced such immeasurable pain and loss that it could be excused if they became bitter, hating people. However, this is the opposite of what they did. They didn't allow the hatred they had felt to turn into hatred within themselves. Now, they definitely weren't superheroes. They didn't fly around in form-fitting outfits, fighting villains to, that with a plan to control the world. But what they did do 
is they had used their suffering, their past, their experiences as a way to look at the world differently, to see the people who suffered and to empathize with them in a way that many people simply cannot. For example, my grandfather, he owned a business in a poor, predominantly black neighborhood of Philadelphia called Germantown where there lived a man who they called Gigolo because he was always dancing around, likely due to some form of mental illness. Now, being a black man in the civil rights era with a mental illness, Gigolo was the end of many prejudices held by the society. And my grandfather could easily have joined in on those and used his past as an excuse to hate. But he didn't do that. Instead, every day as he walked past Gigolo, he would give him a part of his sandwich or give him a dollar and ask your parents, a dollar was a lot back then. Um, instead of using his past as a way to create hatred, he used it as a way to offer Gigolo what he never received, but what he wished he had received when he was the one suffering. Now, in addition to using his experiences as a way to look at the world differently, he also turned the other cheek and lived as one of the happiest, funniest people I've ever met. He was always telling jokes or drawing pictures, always trying to make people laugh. And one time, it almost came back to bite him. He was interviewing for a for an apartment at an assisted care facility called Anne's Choice in Pennsylvania. And he was almost denied because of a dirty joke he told the interviewer. <laughs> Even when he was 85 years old, suffering from dementia, he still felt the desire to make others smile. But this was his spirit. And it was like this for my grandmother as well. When I was five or six, we went on a trip to Disney World, me, my family, and both my grandparents. So it was six of us. And one ride sticks out from the rest. We went on this water raft ride where everybody got in and you would, whatever, go down like a, a little stream. And I don't know what happened, if it was fate or what, but as we went past this big explosion or eruption of water, my grandfather was in the perfect position for it all to come splashing down on him. And he looks down, he looks up, absolutely mortified. And sitting next to him is his wife of 60 years, cracking up, absolutely dying of laughter because her husband is sitting there with soaked khakis. But more than just her sense of humor and, a la and an amazing laugh, my grandmother was one of the most loving people I've ever met. Uh, I remember when I was younger, we would visit them in Pennsylvania, at their house in Pennsylvania on long weekends and leave after my parents got home from work, so often quite late. I don't remember these trips because of some amazing scenery between Madison, Connecticut and Richboro, Pennsylvania. No, <laughs> but what I do remember is waking up in the back of our Honda Odyssey minivan with a McDonald's Happy Meal toy in my right hand because it was a special occasion, so we got McDonald's. And my grandmother being there, looking down at me with these loving eyes inviting us to come in and eat, eat, no matter the hour, as good Jewish mothers do. My grandmother could have been excused for being a bitter woman. She had been taken from her home at the age of 14. She had lost everything she knew at an age younger than we can drive. But she didn't. She lived on as one of the most loving, caring people I've ever met. Now, we live in divisive times. It's clear to see the cracks that exist in our society, not just nationally, but globally. An attitude of us versus them 
has arisen among people of all walks of life. And while it's easy to blame the other side, the other side that has no morals, the other side that doesn't understand the way the world works, the other side that is too caught up in their ways to see anything different, we must refrain from this natural response to criticize others and isolate ourselves. Now to relate to our theme for tonight, we have drawn lines in the sand, lines that divide us, that keep us from each other. And sometimes this is necessary in order to progress. For as the tides rise, as the waves come up our shores, they erase these lines. They destroy the division. And as these waves crash upon our shores, we must look at the past, at the people who have suffered, at the people who have forgiven. Now, as I said, my grandparents were not heroes. They weren't perfect. You couldn't even sleep on the same room as my grandfather because he snored so damn loud. But what he and my grandmother were able to do is realize that they were victims of an unspeakable tragedy. And no hatred within themselves would change that fact. They were able to love and forgive in a situation that tried to destroy these feelings. And we all must strive to do the same. Thank you.